In 1989, as I was driving to work, I heard about a murder that had taken place in Beverly Hills. And then I got to work, and they said, it's yours. And at the time, I was working in the organized crime unit of the district attorney's office. Most murder cases are put together by the police and given to the DA to prosecute. Occasionally, when you're in a special unit, you get a murder case at the get-go. It came my way because there were allegations that it was a mob hit. And I met with the detectives pretty early on. I had heard that he was just a nightmare to work with. He yelled and screamed a lot. He was brutal to people. I had been told that right after his murder, people were pretty pleased that he was no longer on the earth. They wanted away from their parents, but they wanted the money and the lifestyle. It's as simple as that. And I kept saying to the cops, find me those guns, because once we can hook them up with any guns, we can prove that they're the killers and not somebody else. When the brothers did the burglary in Calabasas, their attorney said, go talk to Ozeal, and it will be better for you that you're trying to deal with your problems in a therapeutic setting. So that's what they did. And then after the murders, Eric went back, because Eric emotionally had a lot tougher time with what he'd done than his brother, or at least he felt the need to go see Dr. Ozeal. People kill their parents all the time. Rich people from Beverly Hills don't. And that's why this case was a phenomenon. We had to have two juries, because if defendant number one confesses and implicates defendant number two, you can't put that statement on unless you could clean it up or he has his own jury. So both Lyle and Eric had made all these statements that implicated the other. So we had two juries. Leslie Abramson was the lead counsel for Eric. A lot of people in LA that will tell you that, I mean, that Leslie Abramson was one of the best attorneys to have if you have a homicide case. When modern audiences are encountering the footage of the trial, one of the main stars of that footage is Leslie Abramson. You owe us as jurors one thing only, that you must entertain the possibility that we're telling the truth. Jill Lansing was the lead counsel for Lyle. She was a well-respected public defender and went in private practice. When the defense made their opening statement, you could hear the judge breathing. It was that quiet in the courtroom. And I thought, oops, we're in trouble. There is a jury instruction that says that if you have an honest but unreasonable belief in the need for self-defense, you get a voluntary manslaughter. Express concern that the notes the doctor You're not convicted of either first or second degree murder. So I knew that's what they were going for. And the weapons, they had ditched them on a hill up in Mulholland. They weren't overly sophisticated. So they got caught. The cross-examination dealt a lot with their preparation, which shows premeditation, and the lies they told to people. They were shot? Yes. What happened? <laughs> Mr. Menendez, that you're crying. Is that correct? Yes. At the same time that you're crying, you're also lying, aren't you? Um, yes. You emphasize that they are pathological practice liars. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, they're lying to you too. The uncertainty of their youth that came across because of what a monster that their father was, I believed it. But that said, you know, you talked to Pam Bozanich, and she didn't believe it from the get go. One of the relatives came to me before the trial started, and this relative said that she had been to visit Lyle in the county jail and that Lyle had told her what the defense was gonna be. And she said, but Lyle, you know that's not true. And he says to her, well, that's how it's gonna be. So she looks at me and I said, well, I can't call you as a witness, right? And she said, no, I won't testify to that. But that's what he told me. There was a lot of criticism of the fact that the jury hadn't convicted. An awful lot of people, when they heard the abuse excuse, they did not buy it. They did not at all. Court TV put the trial on their streaming service during the pandemic. I'm not afraid of the Menendez brothers, but my sense of justice would be offended if they got out. <laughs> 